today I'm back with another mystery video. I'm in a different setup today just because I've got a lot going on in my room at the moment. I've been away these past few weeks. I had Sitsy and I was away in Chester and things like that, so I haven't really unpacked a lot. So my room's a bit mad at the moment, but I'm gonna do a chatty video, hopefully on my second channel, on my vlog channel. Um, so look out for that if you just kind of want a life update. Also, my makeup's a mess. I know, I'm really sorry. I did this in about five minutes. And also, my acrylics. I've taught myself how to do acrylics and I haven't painted them yet, so this is just like pure now, so I'm sorry about that. So today's case I'm going to be discussing is the story of the Grimes sisters. And there's a few videos on this story online and there's a few things to discuss, primarily just that it isn't really um, a case that has a lot to do with theories, there isn't really a lot of theories surrounding it, mostly it's just a really quite sad and heartbreaking case that is discussed, so I'm just going to be talking about the awful and really really heartbreaking and upsetting circumstances surrounding the disappearance and death of the Grimes sister. So as per usual I have my coffee and my book down here, so if at any point in the video I look down then um, that's just because I'm reading sort of the research notes that I've made. So the Grimes sisters were Barbara Grimes who was 15 year old at the time of her disappearance and Patricia Grimes who was 13 years old. So the backstory of their case comes from Elvis Presley and him being at the height of his fame, mid 50s he was sort of reaching his peak, he was super super well loved, he was well known, so obviously um, he had quite a big fan base and the Grimes sisters were two of his self-declared biggest fan. It said they loved every one of his singles, his songs, his films, everything and according to their mum they had been to see his most recent film release Love Me Tender a total of 14 times. So obviously as you can tell they were huge fans of Elvis and um, this is kind of where their story kicks off. On December 27th 1956 the two Grimes sisters decided to go see Love Me Tender for a 15th time. They left their home and went to a theatre, it's Brighton Theatre in Chicago, and they left at around 7.30pm. They left their home with a total of $2.50 between them, and their plan was to, once they'd finished watching the film, to come directly home. So their mother Loretta Grimes had expected that they were going to stay a little bit longer, they were going to stay for the double feature, they hadn't initially said this, but obviously sometimes with films when there's a new release they show a double feature of the film so they repeat it, and she expected that because they were such huge fans they were going to stay for both showings of the film, which means that they would be home no later than 11.45pm. So obviously Loretta waited around for this time to make sure they got in okay because they are still young, and when this time had come and gone, she began to get worried. So she sent two of the older Grimes siblings to the bus stop where the two younger Grimes sisters were expected to arrive. When three buses passed while they were waiting there and then it was only around 2am they decided that they had waited long enough and they were going to return home and tell their mum they hadn't heard anything from the sisters. Very very quickly after this a search team was assembled because obviously two young girls are missing so this huge search party went out to try and find these two young girls. So a friend of the girls came forward, Dorothy Weinert her name was, I think that's how you say it. She said that she'd been sat behind them during the first showing of the film and they seemed happy, they didn't seem troubled. As she left before the second showing of the film, she said they seemed in really high spirits while they were at the concession stand. So as Dorothy was leaving, they were at the concession stand and they seemed perfectly fine laughing. So she had no concerns, she didn't think anything was wrong with them. And then after this came forward that sort of suggested nothing was wrong, they didn't run away or anything. Um, one of the largest manhunts in Chicago's history followed. Large teams of law enforcement officials and civilians came together just to find these two young girls that there was still no sign of. There was also help coming in from neighbouring towns to offer their research and, and um, resources and everything to try and help find these girls because it became such big news. But before long the case eventually came cold because no one had any clue where they had gone. After this random sightings of the two girls came from throughout the country, obviously this happens, you'll know this is kind of quite a common theme in a lot of these videos I talk about a lot of the time when there's missing children, people um, are often mistaken because kids look alike and yeah, so a lot of random sightings come in just from dotted about. One in particular came from Nashville, Tennessee, which led a lot of people to believe that the two young girls had staged their disappearance themselves and chosen to run away and um, go and find Elvis. And this particular theory picked up such a storm that Elvis himself took to the radio to address the girls, to plead that and beg that they'd come home because he didn't obviously, he cared about his fans, so he just said like, if you come to find me, please come. Please return home because 
um, it's not the way to go about it and everyone's worried so yeah Elvis himself addressed the girls and even after this they still heard nothing. A month after that because it picked up such a media storm so many more sightings and leads came forward and um, everything was followed but still the case was cold. Then on January 22nd 1957 a man called Leonard, Leonard Prescott saw um, on the side of a road what he originally thought was two mannequins like two store mannequins that had just been dumped uh, it was on German Church Road in Willow Springs, Illinois. So even though he thought there were mannequins, it was still quite a weird sighting, it was qu still quite suspicious. So he chose not to um, go up to them alone, he chose to run home to his wife so that he had someone else there while, he while they checked them out. They returned to where he saw these two what he thought were mannequins and as they got closer they realised that they had found two bodies. These bodies would later be discovered as being the Grimes sisters. So the two girls' bodies were placed really awkwardly, so they had Barbara lying face down, um, with it, so her face in the ground, and then on top of her Patricia was lying facing upwards, which is obviously a really unnatural, really strange position for bodies to be placed in, so it suggests that someone had sort of meticulously placed them in this position for some unknown reason and when they were found both of their faces had been really quite badly damaged by sort of animals, nature pretty much it just happens with bodies that have been left in the open. Then at 1.30pm that day the local police had been informed of the discovery and they came to check it out. Pretty much immediately on their arrival they had deduced that just by their appearance they could tell that the bodies had been left there prior to the most recent snowfall which had began two weeks earlier so they had been on the side of the road for about two weeks because they were frozen so they didn't know exactly how long they'd be there but they know that they'd been left on the side of the road for longer than two weeks and obviously this changed the case from a disappearance case to a murder case so a lot more leads were arrested on suspicion of this murder and um, it began triggering the investigation once again. The most prominent suspect was a man by the name of Edward Lee Bedwell. He'd confessed to the murders despite a lack of evidence um, linking him to, to the murders and he later did actually recant his confession and said that he didn't do it but um, no one really knows sort of why he confessed in the first place. Before an autopsy could be conducted on the two girls' bodies, they had to wait for them to be thawed which tells you just how cold they'd been. They'd been left on the side of the road during snowfall so they had to wait for the bodies to thaw before they could conduct the autopsy. The autopsy revealed that the last meal the two girls had eaten had been their dinner before they went to the cinema when they'd gone when they disappeared so that sort of leads to the conclusion that, had, that they had been killed pretty much um, immediately after they disappeared because they would have eaten something else. So this place is their time of death as um, a, f a couple of hours post them disappearing. On their death certificates the cause of death was officially ruled as murder however no because no explanation could be offered as to how they were murdered or anything like that the only sort of explanation that was offered was that the two girls had experienced secondary secondary shock due to exposure to the elements because of being outside and obviously that was the only evidence they had because the bodies had been damaged so that was sort of what was listed. On January 28th 1957 a funeral was held for the two girls at St Maurice Church. There was a closed casket ceremony and then later buried at Holy, sorry I can't pronounce this, Holy Suffolk. Suffolk Catholic Cemetery, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. Around this time Loretta Grimes had made a notable promise with the police, they, the police had promised them that they would not stop looking for whoever did this to her young daughters. However she died in 1989 at age 83 without getting any answers for her daughters' deaths, so that's actually really quite heartbreaking. For many years there was no new leads and it was only um, when quite a few years later when a former criminal investigator named Ray Johnson actually chose to sort of investigate, the like reopen the case, um, he found a new lead and claimed to crack it open. So he claimed a similar murder, um, murder of a young girl called Bonnie Lee Scott that took place in Addison, Illinois a year after the Grime sisters' death was linked to their death. So Bonnie was 15 and she was killed and found naked in similar circumstances to that of the Grimes sisters. So the man named Charles Leroy Malkist, who was allegedly responsible for murdering Bonnie Lee Scott, he allegedly made a phone call to Loretta and bragged about the murders of the Grimes sisters and also Bonnie's murder. 
and Loretta said that he had an extremely distinctive voice and she would recognise his voice anywhere. It was so distinctive that I think she heard his, his voice in an interview or something and immediately knew it was the man who called her. So Ray Johnson, the public investigator who cracked this open, he claimed that this went unpublished by the media at the time and there were a number of similarities that were found in both murder cases that were linked. So um, on the Grimes sisters, they had found non-lethal marks on their abdomens on their stomachs and that was similar to those found on the body of Bonnie Lee Scott. There's also allegedly a third girl that allegedly went missing uh, with the Grimes sisters but she escaped and she was only 14 years old at the time and apparently she just kept quiet out of fear because she didn't really know what to do and then when all this sort of occurred she came forward and agreed to talk to Ray Johnson. There wasn't really much on sort of what happened in this interview and because she was only 14 her identity was kept secret it wasn't really published, but um, it is known that she said that he had a distinctly unforgettable voice. So this could link into what Loretta said about the phone call. So Charles Leroy Malkist was charged with the murder of Bonnie Lee Scott. He was sentenced to 99 years in prison, but actually only served 11 years, which is insane. And he was released and is now married with two kids, which I think is insane. And that is pretty much all there is on this man and the Grimes sisters case that's kind of where it ends which is really really quite heartbreaking considering absolutely no answers were provided if anything more questions come about yeah let me know what you guys think if there's any other prominent theories that you've heard or sort of suggestions um what you guys think like your opinions let me know this down below and also if there are sorry i have a really itchy face also let me know if there are any other cases you want me to discuss in future week's videos as you guys know i do these mystery videos every sunday i'll have a playlist link down below if you want to have a binge watch of all these mystery videos and i will see you guys on wednesday for another beauty fashion lifestyle related video thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon bye